Okay. How are you? Good. Okay. Oh. So uh, do, you, do you have a question for me? Yeah. yeah. There's five questions. Okay. Go ahead. These all start off. These are just simple moral questions in the beginning here. Are you, are you Christian atheist or are you? I'm agnostic atheist. So where do you bring your morality from before asking moral questions? Why is your, your yardstick for determining whether right or not? Because you're okay. assuming they're wrong if you're asking them, I'm assuming. So you should have a yardstick to determine why they're right or wrong. Oh, uh, actually, well, here, I'll explain what I th how I think morals work. And then we can get into the questions and you can see for yourself. Okay. Okay, so I, I, I think morals are subjective. They come okay. from the evolution of the brain with mere neurons, with understanding that give rise to empathy, with an ability to think for your, of yourself in another person. Are you reading position. something? Uh, yeah, I wrote this before. This is my own okay. words, though. No problem. So let me give an example. When I burn myself, I feel very no, unpleasant no, you, pain. It's no. okay. You don't need to give an example. I want to ask you on what you said. You said they're subjective, which means that there is no objective morality, which means that there is no right or wrong. It just depends on the subjective opinion. That's not what subjective morality means. Really? Do you know what, sub what does the word subjective mean? It's opposite of objective. And so it's, it's based about, on the subject. It is based on the subject and the situation and the circumstance, everything. So the su subject Mac Mac and the subject Muhammad, if the subject Muhammad says eating pork is immoral, the subject Mac Mac says eating pork is moral, the action of eating pork objectively outside of Muhammad and Mac, there's no determination of whether it's right or wrong because it's all based on Mac and Muhammad. If we were not there, it would not be neither right or wrong. So subjective by definition means that there is no objective right or wrong. It's just a personal opinion of what you would you think yourself is right and what you, what you think yourself is wrong. How many the action people? itself outside of you and me is not really right or wrong because it needs you and me to determine. So, so that's why I said even with subjective morality, how many people would you say they think murdering innocent people is wrong? Is irrelevant. It's still the, uh, if there is someone, if there's one or two or three, because all what they're going to say to you, the people who believe it's okay, they will say to you, that's your opinion. I don't need to accept your opinion. It's your subjective opinion. I think it's okay. You cannot enforce your subjective morality on others because it's not objective. So whether the majority believes in it or not, that still does not change the fact that it's subjective. So I, I'm, I'll, obviously I believe that killing innocent people is ob objectively wrong, but I have an objective standard of morality. You don't. So as an atheist, if you have a subjective standard of morality, if you give me your opinion about the questions you're about to ask, it will remain to be your opinion. And your opinion is well, not going to be asking you the questions. It will be your opinion. No, no, but I'm going to answer you based on what I view as an objective moral uh, yep. view. So yep. it's, an, it's not my opinion. It's what the Quran and Sunnah say, whether I yep. exist today or not. So it's not my opinion. It's not sub subjective because if whether I'm here or not, or whether any Muslim is here or not, the Quran is there still, but it's objectively right and wrong. It's still there in the Quran. It's not my opinion. So okay. You're bringing your opinion based on your upbringing. So that's the difference between me and you. Actually, so you I asked me to explain more. I just wanted to ask my questions and get into the Socratic method to see if you actually know what you're talking about. Okay, I don't need to get into the Socratic method. Socrates was not the only philosopher out there. I don't need I'm, to use his method. But generally, look, I will let you ask your questions, by the way. But you said you will ask moral questions. So I'm establishing a reality first. Is that if you don't have a standard of right or wrong, if you ask these questions based on thinking the wrong, it's just your subjective opinion. And I can just say, okay, I disagree with your subjective opinion. And that can be a basic answer to your question. I don't need to give you reasoning, basically. You don't have something enforceable in order for me to say, okay, Oh, let me explain this. You're right. It's very important to establish that because you're about to ask moral questions. So go ahead. If you want to ask your moral questions after establishing that foundation, which is very important, you can ask your moral questions. I don't mind. Okay. Number one, you see a child drowning in a shallow pool and notice a person that is just watching that is able to save the child with no risk to themselves, but is not. Is that person's non-action moral? Someone who sees a child drowning is able to save him. He does not save him. That's immoral. Yes. So that person is immoral? That action is immoral. Yeah. yeah the action of not saving the child, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So if, her, if he, there's nothing obviously stopping him from doing, because you're saying he's able to do it, he's able to save the child in that situation. Yeah, I said there's, there's nothing preventing no him from doing it. Him, yeah, then no he has risk to himself obviously. or anything, right? Yes. Yeah. So why does God not save the child? Because this life is a test. But and if how, God how is, and if God to prevent all immoral actions from taking place, there will only be moral actions in which therefore there will be no choice between moral and immoral which means this life cannot be a test. In order for a test to be there, there has to be two choices between right and wrong and between good and bad, which would mean that good and bad has to actualize in reality. Well, I don't, I don't think the child's choosing to drown. So 
why doesn't God save the child when it's objectively thing, moral I that we you. should save the child? I answered why, you by saying this, this life is a test. And that death of a child can be a test <laughs> for the parents. You're, so just, this, you're, just viewing, you're just viewing the death of the child only regarding the child. But I'm telling you that the child is a pixel in a big picture. So that picture would be his family, would be people surrounding him. The death of a child is a test for the parents. The death of a child is a test for the family. The death of a so there's a lot of variables that you're not taking into account that is considered a test in this life. Oh, and anyways, well, the, the then, children that then die... should we not save the child? And the should children we not that, save the child then? The children that die Islamically, they go to paradise. If a child dies and goes to paradise, that's a reward for the child, that's not a punishment. So I, 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 if I would go to paradise, if I die as a child, I would say, okay, I, dying as a child is better than living this life. And maybe being on the verge of maybe entering paradise or not. So you, you're just coming with the problem of evil, which is a very basic kind of argument that has been dismantled so many times. But I've already answered your question. That can be a test. The death of a child, if the child goes to paradise, then that's actually a reward. That's a merciful act towards the child. And that death can be a test for other people that are uh, around him, his family members, his, his mother and father, etc. Okay. So how is morality objective if, and from God? If God doesn't save the child, but we are morally obligated to? God is the source of objective morality. So he determines what is right and wrong for us to do. He is the standard of right and wrong. Whatever God does, because God is good, whatever he does is morally good. Well, He's the standard God does not wrong. save that so child. You are, you are, so you're is that us. morally you're good not us. to save the child? You're conflating us with God. I've already answered why the child was not saved. Now we're going and say, I don't like to go in circles. I already explained to you why, but this life is a test. If you want me to repeat my answers, then we'll just hear it in a circle. I already give you the right. answer. Whether you're satisfied or not, that's not my, my problem. But the problem <laughs> is objective morality. Again, now you now, you just idea, said in the beginning of the discussion, you don't want to talk about objective morality. What happened now? Now you're saying you're to talk Okay. Well, so everything is connected. Right. Objective it's morals from God, right? And objective morality is the idea that right and wrong exist factually, absolute, without importance no. of opinion. It is a no. concept that some actions and beliefs are imperatively good or inherently bad, and that goodness or badness of those things hold true no matter who or what else you believe in. I don't agree with this, with this definition. That's your definition. Really? Right. Yeah. No, that's the, physical, that's the philosophical definition. Look it exactly. up. Exactly. Why do I need to accept it? I'm a Muslim. I'm not. I'm also, <laughs> okay. I'm not this so you don't I'm not this oh, you, can, you can laugh at You're laughing it out. is not an answer. I'm not a student of Socrates. The Socrates is not my God. He might be your God that you're worshipping, but I'm not a philosopher. Socrates is not my God. And Aristotle is not my God. And I don't give a crap, literally, with all the respect about what they say. They're just human beings existed in history. They can be right or wrong, just like everyone else. What they say is not biblical truth for me to say, oh, Socrates said it, therefore I'm going to believe it now. I don't give, I don't care. Not right? the people that so with all due respect, I'm, I'm answering you, if you allow me to, to finish answering you. Your God, whatever he says, is not relevant to me. I said to you that the criteria for us, for what is right and wrong, is Allah. Allah is the one who determines right and wrong. So it's, it's not like the objective morality is an abstract reality that exists that you can touch on. It's, it's an abstract concept. And that concept is based on the creator. The creator is the one who determines right and wrong. I've already answered that question. So if the, the, the creator determined to leave that child, then there is a wisdom that that action is good because he is testing the creation. That child drowning is good because that child goes to paradise eventually. So that is actually a merciful act. Now, you, do, you see that or you don't see that, that's irrelevant. But the reality is I've already explained it to you. And if we continue to go in a circle, then there is no point with discussing with you with all respect i prefer to like you ask a question i give you an answer satisfied or not satisfied people can clearly see that i've answered your question so how are objective like dude that doesn't make morals objective you're saying that morality is objective based on allah is not the correct definition of objective morality your Te definition of your you God's tell definition. me your definition of objective morality i just explained it i said a lot definition is, is what allah says by definition, Allah is exactly. Allah is the truth. He's Al-Haq and he's Al-Adl. He's the most just. These are his names and attributes. Therefore, whatever he commands is truth and just and, and, and correct and good. So, okay. Okay. So, when a child's sitting there drowning in a well, I answer that God question. does not You're say that. Like, atheists, they, they try to pretend I'm going to do it as a Socrates method. And then he's just making an emotional argument. He's trying to make an, an argument of a baby. That, oh, yeah. Look, look, look. You laughing at you yourself. Interrupt, man. You want to you you talk so rationally. defensive. You want to talk rationally. I'm not defensive at all. I'm just exposing what you're doing. This, this cheap tactics. Either you want to do things rationally or you want to play on an emotional uh, level. You can go to uh, some, some like Christians, maybe they would like emotions. But here I, I deal with, with fact, facts and reality. So if you have facts, you've already dealt with your questions. You have anything else to say? Go ahead. I'm giving you the chance. Uh, are you going to interrupt though as soon as I start? I'm going to interrupt if there's a need to. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. You just finished saying that if God lets a child drown, it becomes a good thing, right? 
I gave my answer. I don't want to keep repeating myself in circles. I said, because the child goes to paradise and already, I, I don't need to really repeat myself. I don't know. You like repetition a lot, but I, I don't need to repeat myself. So. So why do you save the child? Because this is a test for me. I'm not God. God is the one who creates the test. It's you, in, in, the but, equivalent of what you're saying. The, the, the child's going to go saying, directly to paradise the way, if yeah? you don't the save the child. Do you want an answer to your question or no? The equivalent of what you're saying is a teacher giving a test to the students. Why is the teacher not giving the answers to the students when they are in the test? Because he's the teacher. He's not the student. The students are the ones who are dealing with the test. The teacher is observing the students. So your ridiculous question of why does God not save the child? Because God is the one who is putting us in the test. We are in the test. So God does not interfere with our test. He's not stopping us from doing something because otherwise it's not a test. So it's such a ridiculous argument of the respect. I already gave you an equivalent. I hope you understood what I said. Oh, I, I think it's mental gymnastics that you're defining objective morality yeah, your I, own way. I there. try to be fit. So I play gymnastics sometimes. It's okay. It's good. I think it's... It's healthy. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, look, I'll let you right. go because honestly, I don't see any sincerity in this discussion, you know? So, yeah, do you want to ask something quickly before I let you go? You already asked your question. Your do you, side, another, you have sure. another question? Quickly, I'll give you another chance. What do you have? Go ahead. Oh, you want another question? Yes. I'll, uh, no, I, I'm letting you. I don't want anything, honestly. I, you're the one who's coming into the channel, isn't it? Yep. But I mean, it's not really a good one, anyway. Okay, how about this? I, I, anyways, I, I okay, wanna... Mac, 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 I just, uh, well, I'll let you go. I'll let you go, Mac, Mac, you know? I hope you find sincerity one day and you actually reflect on your actions. If you're an atheist and agnostic, you shouldn't care really what Muslims believe in. Uh, if you actually were to believe, I don't know what happened to you in your life. I hope one day maybe you sit down and reflect upon reality that you're going to die one day and realizing whether there is truth out there, there's objective truth, there's objective reality and what will happen to you when you die. And uh, that's, that's my hope for you. And that's it. And I will let you go, Mac Mac. Uh, we had a discussion, but I do think there's no point of proceeding further. Okay. Bye bye, Mac yeah, Mac. Because you don't got good answers. Yeah, no, I don't have good answers. Okay, I'll let people...